Welcome to The Boiling Point. I am Richie Ware and I'm on location at Victory Energy and I've got President John Viscop and founder of Victory Energy with me. And I thought maybe, John, we would first of all just say thanks for all that you guys do sure. for us and uh, with all the, the boilers that you guys make for us for our rental fleet and also for projects. And speaking of projects, we're right in front of a boiler here that is a, a D-style boiler that it's actually one of our customers and it's in your new test facility. That's right. I thought it would be a great idea to talk to you about just how a water tube works. Sure. And uh, maybe just go through. This is a D style and maybe just talk about the fire and where it goes and then okay. how it works. So the boiler we have here today is our discovery type boiler. It's a D type unit. And what signifies a D from other configurations is essentially the orientation of the drums. So you can kind of see right here, the upper drum being the steam drum is to the left of the of the uh, convective section of this particular boiler with the lower water drum or sometimes known as a mud drum directly underneath the steam drum and so the idea behind it is with the drums over top of one another and with the way the unit is tubed in a d type configuration being the longest circulating tube of the boiler starting at the steam drum making a d configuration and entering into the mud drum forming a d type unit yeah and so you can see in this particular example, uh, we call this a right-handed unit, meaning that the furnace is on the right-hand side of the boiler. Okay. And right here is the burner um, for this particular unit. And of course the burner is uh, combusting down through the furnace section. Okay. And as that unit is combusted and the flue gases turn the corner, which we call the rear turnaround section of the unit, um, the, the heat transfer, if you will, comes through the convective zone tubes, which are connected between the upper steam drum and lower water drum to produce a circulation and eventually steam out the steam drum. So, in, okay, so steam drum obviously is up, up top and that's, that's where right. everything is accumulating before it goes out. Typically in a water tube, what type of pressures are you talking about with something like yeah, that? Yeah, that's a great question. So, um, inherent to a water tube design, we would see anything from a low pressure unit maybe being somewhere north of 100 PSI mm -hmm. G steam upwards to over a thousand psi and that's one of the you know key attributes to a water tube boiler right maybe why you would choose that over let's say a fire tube unit right would just be higher pressures and also the other added benefit with a water tube unit such as this um not only in this configuration but others is the implementation of a superheater oh okay um, in the convective zone of the uh of the uh, boiler yeah. so superheat basically um, maybe explain a little bit about that because okay. a lot of people understand the saturation um, like saturation with the 350 PSI sat, let's say. Right. Um, but it needs to go to a 750 PSI to a 750 degree superheat. How That's does right. that actually happen? Yeah, so great question. So what we do in that particular case is, of course, you know, with the example that we mentioned before, as the steam is produced in the steam drum, there's a disengaging area at the top of the drum where the saturated steam would leave the drum. And we have a crossover header, which would go from the steam drum to the entrance of the superheater. Okay. Now the superheater itself in a D-type boiler such as this would be a radiant convective type, uh -huh. meaning that part of the serpentine coil that's in the furnace would be partially in the furnace and partially in the convective zone of the boiler. Okay. And so as that steam leaves the steam drum at a desired pressure, in this particular case, 350 pounds, let's say, that steam would go through the superheater. It would be, uh, the steam temperature would rise from a saturated condition, maybe 400 degrees, and we would elevate it to 700 degrees or 750 okay. degrees Fahrenheit. Right. And that would be realized at the discharge of the superheater. Wow, awesome. Well, as this is actually in your test facility, uh, right. so we're getting ready to test it. I know you still got some things to button up with it and clean it up before it goes out. Um, but as far as uh, this being a D style, what other type of boilers are there besides just a D style water tube? Sure, sure. So as we mentioned, as other than the D type, we have an O type boiler configuration and also an A type as well. Okay. And that just has to do with the orientation, the symmetry of the tubes, if you will. Okay. All right, well, appreciate the information. And uh, man, we go back a ways. In fact, we you built our first two, or we built, gave you the order for the first two package boilers, right? Yeah, over 20 years ago. Over 20 years ago. 20 so years. It's yeah. been a great relationship. And again, as I've said, we, we do sell the product, um, but we also use the product. And so we know that it's top quality and guys are great to work with. So appreciate you hanging out with us and we'll Absolutely. see you next time Sounds on good. The Boiling Point.
Appreciate John hanging out with us today and talking a little bit about the water tube boiler. Pretty cool to get a little bit about the water tube boiler from a guy that makes the water tube. So appreciate him hanging out with us. Speaking of learning about water tube, make sure that you go out, check out our Ware Boiler University, sign up for a class. We'd love to see you. And if you can't come, take the online class that we have in Boiler 101. Well, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. If you don't mind, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And as always, please share those videos. We'll see you next time on The Boiling Point.